go to Google and type Rathod's IAS. Then you can see our website Rathod's IAS Academy. There you have to click on login or register in the blue color. So if you have not registered yet, you have to click on do not have account and fill the details. So after once you have login, click on the courses. There you can see course list. And in this course list, you can see wide range of courses. Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 18th June 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote, it is about excellence. So perfection is not attainable, but if we chase perfection, we can catch excellence. Okay. So perfection is, uh, it is not attainable, but if we are mainly having chase for uh, this perfection. So whenever we are chasing this perfection, automatically we can catch excellence. Okay, so perfection is very important. And if you see the first topic, it is about Agnipath. So I will be showing you today's Hindu PDF at last. And in that PDF, you can see so there were number of riots which are mainly going on throughout the country regarding this Agnipat scheme. So now let us try to understand different dimensions regarding this scheme. So this scheme is important from your governance point of view, which mainly comes into your GS paper too. So now we are going to see what is this scheme. So why this scheme is in use and we are going to see some key provisions of this scheme. So what are the issues, why riots are happening and apart from that, we are going to see what is the significance of this scheme. So here, you can expect a main question from this topic in your GS paper too. Okay, so please be focused. And if you are talking about context, why it is in use? So recently, recently government of India unveiled this Agnipath scheme. Okay, so government of India unveiled this Agnipath scheme. And this scheme which is mainly focusing on recruitment. Okay, recruitment of soldiers. It is mainly focusing on recruiting soldiers across three services. So what are those three services? We have Army, we have Navy and we have Air Force. So for these three services here, Government of India which mainly unveiled this Agnipad scheme which mainly focusing on recruiting of soldiers for these three services. So if you are talking about some details regarding this scheme, it mainly allows patriotic and as well as motivated youth, they can serve in these three armored forces. They can serve in these three armored forces and the period here it is not permanent, it is for four years. So for four years, patriotic and as well as motivated youth, they can serve these armored forces, they can serve uh, in these armored forces for a period of four years. So you have to remember this time period that is four years. And under this scheme, and joining the army, they are called as Agnivirs. So here, youth who are mainly joining the scheme, they are called as Agnivirs. And youth will be able to be recruited into army for a short duration. And actually under this scheme, how many individuals they will be recruited per year? About 45 to 50,000. 45 to 50,000 soldiers they will be recruiting per year that is annually and actually they will be serving in Indian Army or Navy or Air Force for time period of four years. So in this four years based on their performance, so 25 percentage of this soldiers, they will be recruited back for this permanent commission for 15 years of time period. Okay, so this is about some details regarding this scheme and who are eligible for this scheme. So only the persons who are below officer's rank, that is commissioned officers. So here it is only for the persons who are below this officer's rank. And they are not going to join the forces as commissioned officers. As you all know, these commissioned officers, they are highest rank officers. So they are highest ranked officers. And under this scheme, especially they are going for recruiting of soldiers who are below this officer rank. And these commission officers, they hold an exclusive rank in Indian Armored Forces. Okay. And if you are talking about aspirants, they need to between 17 and a half to 23 years of age 
students or youth they will be eligible to apply for this scheme so age here is 17 and up to 23 years and if you are focusing on objectives of this scheme so it is mainly providing an opportunity for especially patriotic and as well as motivated youth to join armed forces okay it is mainly providing here opportunity for patriotic and motivated youth to join this armed forces and it is also expected to bring down average age profiles of indian arm indian armed forces to 4 to 5 years it is mainly bringing down the age and next one is this scheme also envisions that the average age or in the forces it is 32 years today now it will go down to 26 Okay, 26 in 6 to 7 years. And if you are talking about what are the benefits of this scheme, so after once this four years of the service which mainly completed, so they will be getting one time seva nidhi package. They will be getting one time seva nidhi package, and it is like 11.71 lakhs will be paid to this agni weeds. And next one is. So there will also rupees forty eight lakh life insurance cover for four years. So for four years, if there is any death is happening, they will be getting money of like forty eight lakh rupees as life insurance. And if in case of death, the payment will cover rupees one crore. Okay. So whenever there is any case of death is happening, they will be getting one crore, including. Pay for the unserved tenure. So, for example, as you all know, the year okay tenure here is four years. But in the first year, if there is anything un uh, unexpected which may happen, that lead to death means. So here one crore of uh, payment will be given. Okay, and next one here is so for the remaining three years, how much amount of the money that should be paid? So that will be also paid. Okay, so here they will be having life insurance cover of forty eight lakh rupees, and if there is any death which mainly happen in case, then they will be getting over one crore rupees, including the pay for unserved tenure as well, and the government will help rehabilitate soldiers who leave the service after four years. After four years, whenever they are leaving, so government will help for rehabilitating of these soldiers, and they will be provided with the skill certificates and as well as bridge courses as well. Okay, so these are some important benefits. And if you are talking about concerns, why there are the protests which are mainly seen across the country? So first one is after once this four year tenure which mainly happened, whenever they coming back to society, yes, they will feel some difficulty to find another job. So Agnipath scheme, which mainly opens the way for recruitment of about forty-five thousand soldiers into army, navy, and as well as air force in the first year. But on short term, the contract it is for four years, and after completion of this contract of four years, only twenty-five percentage of them they will be retained, and rest will be leaving the forces. Okay. So after once they came back to society. So finding jobs will become very much difficult for them, and there is also no provision of pen pension as well. There is no pension benefit. So those hired under this Agnipur scheme, they will be given a one-time lump sum amount, okay? But they will be not getting any pension. So they do not receive any pension benefits for most. Seeking second job is essential to support themselves and as well as their families. And next one is training may remain unutilized. So forces will lose experienced soldiers. Okay. So once this uh, four year tenure is happened, means they will be mainly some of them they will be returning back to society. So because of this here armed forces, they are going to lose some experienced soldiers because they need to train again next batch of uh, agni weeds. Right. So the jawans who are joining the army and navy and as well as air force, they will be given technical training. So that they are able to support the ongoing operations, but these men and women they will leave after four years. Okay, so because of this, it mainly create a void. And if you are talking about what is the significance, the significance here is under this scheme, it is mainly focusing to make ready future soldiers. So if you are talking about Russia Ukraine crisis, so most of the civilians they are take part in this taken part in this. Uh, Russian uh, army, sorry, in uh, Ukrainian army. So because of that, in future, if there is any that like situation that appears in India, means so we need to be ready, right? So we are mainly focusing on creating of future ready soldiers. 
and next one is more employment opportunities so every year there is 40 more than 45000 soldiers will be recruited so that there will be like high or more employment opportunities that can be created and next one is higher skilled workforce so this is also leads to availability of higher skilled workforce to the con to the economy and it will be also leads to improving of our gdp gross domestic product of the country so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding cryptocurrency so this article is important from your gs paper 3 under economy point of view so this article says that there is a need of proper regulation of these cryptocurrencies especially to protect the people so if you see here this article mainly says that recently we saw number of articles that there is a crash of price of this cryptocurrency okay crash in the price of cryptocurrencies it is a timely reminder to retail investors to stay away from highly spe speculative asset class so actually we uh, we don't know like how much price will be there in this cryptocurrency exactly because the price will be very much volatile the price will be mainly based on demand and supply in the market okay so what happened recently we are seeing this cryptocurrency price had been fall down and the bitcoin is one of the most popular cryptocurrency which mainly lost its value of two thirds of its value which mainly last and this one is and even other currencies they have witnessed even larger losses for example you can talk about luna luna it is plunging to zero now and the cryptocurrencies they were initially touted to be alternatives to the fiat currencies and since the supply of lot of cryptocurrencies is limited okay is limited by design investing and as well as a theme based a good way to protect one's wealth and as well as how to protect inflation etc so but as it become obvious for the say, cryptocurrencies they have had very little acceptance as money so they had very very little acceptance of money acceptance as we are comparing with that of money and cryptocurrencies they were now touted as an independent assets like gold and as well as silver and they could serve the effective heads in the times of a crisis so because of this crashing of this cryptocurrency market so what happened that led to the argument that crypto as a asset class okay and next one here is the accessibility of the cryptocurrencies it is widely economy has remained to remained mini school they or no signs of the area okay they are they have no signs of their use for the purpose other than the wild speculation so as we are talking about especially acceptance of this cryptocurrency in this wider economy which remain a very very mini school only little amount of population they are mainly going for accepting of cryptocurrencies but not all so what is the threat here so governments and their central banks they have been largely unwilling to recognize cryptocurrency so even india also which is very much reluctant to recognize cryptocurrencies as a legitimate investment asset okay so it because of this it is one of cause of concern and retail investors they are mainly looking for quick and as well as uh, market gains okay they are mainly focusing on quick and market gains and they have had to plunge into the unregulated space marketed by scams and as well as other pitfalls okay so in this context your author mainly says that regardless of investment prospects of cryptocurrencies a proper regulatory framework it is very much important especially to protect retail investors okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding bricks so title says that z2 host brics virtual summit okay it mainly talking about brics virtual summit so this article is important from your international relations which mainly comes under gs paper 2 so what are the dimensions you need to know so why it is in news so what are the details and some facts regarding this brics and you have to know about what is this term brics plus also so if you say context it mainly says that Chinese president he will host virtual summit of the leaders of the BRICS countries on June 23rd okay so this is the thing which mainly said and if you are talking about details it mainly says that our prime minister he will join this russian president vladimir uh, uh, vladimir putin okay 
so here prime minister will join here russian president who is this president that is putin and even brazilian okay brazilian counterpart and south africa counterpart in this virtual meet next week okay so this is a third this is the first summit of leaders after this or following this russia ukraine crisis so here mr z will also host this big business forum on june 22nd and it mainly focuses on global development and it also lead up it is also one of the lead up to the summit that national security advisor of the five brics nations on wednesday they attend virtual virtual meet okay it is mainly focusing on political and as well as security cooperation they mainly focus on political and as well as security cooperation and a statement which mainly state that here multilateralism and as well as global governance global governance and multilateralism and these also have important new threats and challenges of uh, for our national security and even governance and as well as new domains so here this article says that bg is very very much important and it is also showing some interest in to explore the expansion and as well as include the new developing country uh, members under this brics okay brics plus format it is the next uh, it is the next week summit it is also expected to be attended by the leaders mainly invited from this emerging countries so if you are talking about uh, members of this brics they include b for brazil r for uh, russia i for india c for china and s for south africa so these are the countries which mainly part of brics and now let us try to see next topic title says China foils bid to designate LAT deputy chief as a terrorist. So this article which is very important from our international relations because actually you know that India which is mainly sharing border with Pakistan and as well as China. So from Pakistan we are having threat from this uh, terrorism and even if you see here Afghanistan is present. So in Afghanistan Taliban they mainly came into power. So after Taliban came into power, so Afghanistan, which mainly became a breeding ground for terrorist organizations. Okay, so in this context, so we need to take some effective steps that terrorist attacks should not be happen in India. So here in this context, here India is mainly taking some move to uh, make or to designate so and so individuals as uh, United Nations terrorist. But here this move which mainly. stopped by china so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so if you see context it mainly says that india slammed china for blocking a proposal to list pakistani terror convict that is let or damak dawa so deputy he is a deputy chief okay and i next one is abdul rahman rahman makki as united nation security council designated terrorist Okay, so this move which mainly blocked by China. So now let us try to see some details. So if you see details, it mainly says that China, which is mainly uh, calling the decision that mainly that led to the technical hold on the listing requested by US and as well as India this month. Okay, so this month India and US they came up with a proposal that so these person that is Jamal uh, Dawa, okay, deputy chief that is Abdul Rahman Makki. Okay, Abdul Rahman Makki as United Nations Security Council designated terrorist. So here, here what happened? So China action, which mainly says that it mainly countering. Okay, it mainly uh, having some actions that ran counter to it claims of combating terrorism. So calling the decision by the China to place this technical hold on this listing. which mainly requested by USA and as well as India it mainly said that it is a regrettable and as well as extremely unfortunate so here here what happened protecting well known terrorists from sanctioning in this manner that will only undermine the credibility and as well as that will mainly increase the risk of exposing itself to growing threat of uh, terrorism and as well as there is growing threat of uh, terror financing which is mainly happening so this is the thing which mainly said by the government sources so here whenever this type of uh, moves which are mainly placed on hold means that will leads to undermine the credibility of institution and that will be also increase the risk of exposing exposing uh, exposing the threat of uh, terrorism and next one here is 
so here this is the not for the first time china blocked this type of move but here china also made similar moves to block the designation proposed against this jaish e mohammed chief that is masood asar for several years and finally beijing agreed to this designation in 2019 so if you're talking about what is this united nations Security Council One Two Six Seven Committee. So actually, this committee, which mainly set up in year nineteen ninety nine, and later on, it mainly focused on strengthening. Okay, strengthening of this committee after the September eleven nine by eleven attacks, and actually, it is known as Daesh and as well as Al Qaeda Sanctions Committee, and it mainly comprises permanent and as well as non permanent members of this United Nations Security Council. So for the students who are preparing now, they are beginners, right? So in this United Nations Security Council, we will be having permanent members and as well as temporary members. So total members will be fifteen members, and out of this, five are permanent members and ten are non-permanent members. Okay, so for this non-permanent members, the tenure will be two years. And here, it this committee which mainly come up with two one two six seven list of terrorist is a actually this list it is a global list. And this list, which mainly has is this United Nations Security Council stamp as well. So, what is the process? What is the process that need to be followed to list any person as terrorist under this uh, committee? So, any member state can submit a proposal for listing of one individual group or entity. So, not only the permanent members, but even any member state can submit the proposal. And here, one, two, six, seven committee meets, which mainly required with a notice of four working days. So they can list anyone, but here the prior notice should be given. That is at least four working days before. And next one is decisions on listing and delisting. They were adopted by consensus. So the proposal which is mainly sent to all members, and if no member objects within five working days, and this proposal will be adopted. and if any member of the committee okay any member of the committee may also put a technical hold on the proposal not only whenever one country which is mainly accepting and even whenever any technical hold which is mainly done by the committee also yes this will leads to delay and the matter remaining on the pending list of the committee until such time as member states that has placed the hold decides to turn its decision due to an objection okay and next one is So those who have placed holds, they can go for removing of them with a time frame which may be laid down by committee. And next one is what are the pending issues or present? They must be resolved within six months of time. So this is the procedure. And now let us try to see next topic is regarding Pakistan in FATF grey list. So one important news here regarding this Pakistan's uh, position in this FATF grey list. So now let us try to see context. It mainly says that. Pakistan on Friday got a reprieve. So Pakistan got a reprieve from this EFATF Financial Action Task Force, as it is international watchdog. So it mainly said that it is going to remove Pakistan from this grey list. Okay, from this grey list, this Pakistan will be removed. Okay, so this is about this topic. And if you see kind of details, it mainly says that according to sources aware of the process. So Pakistan would be formally taken off from this grey list in month of October. In month of October, that is twenty twenty two October. Yes, this Pakistan is going to be removed from this grey list. And if you are talking about what is the India stance, so India's India stance and as well some other Western countries, they mainly says that okay, they may not accepted this thing. Okay, because already if you are talking about in India, so in this Jammu and Kashmir, so infiltration which is mainly going on, and there are small arms and LEDs they are mainly seen here, and they are mainly pushed across this LOC region. And how we can remove this? How can we remove this uh, Pakistan from the grey list? So this is one of the important question. And if you are talking about some facts regarding this FATF, it is intergovernmental body. And this body, which mainly established in nineteen eighty nine during G seven summit, okay, in Paris, and actually it is mainly focusing on countries anti money laundering, and next one is anti terror financing activities, etc. And it also coming up with setting up of standards, and uh, it mainly focuses on promoting of effective implementation of legal regulatory and even operational measures for combating of money laundering. Terror financing and even other related threats to integrity of the international financial system, 
and if you are talking about member countries there are 39 member countries and mainly includes the two regional organization that is European Union and as well as DCC Gulf Cooperation Council and India it is a member of FATF and now let us try to see next topic it is mainly regarding disasters so United Nations came up with a report regarding how disaster which mainly affects the population so this topic will be important from your disaster management which mainly comes under your GS paper 3 so if you see context it mainly says that nearly 5 million people in India they were internally displaced okay nearly 5 million people they were internally displaced because of this climate change and disaster in year 2021 so this is according to report of United Nations so if you see details it mainly says that the annual global trend reports by United Nations refugee agency which mainly highlighted that globally about 100 million people they were forced to flee their homes and it mainly because of either violence or human rights abuse food insecurity droughts or climate crisis etc okay and the largest displacements which are mainly seen in especially china with 6 million people and philippines with 5.7 million people and india with 4.9 million okay so majority of the people they are also internally displaced okay from one state to another state or one area to another area within the country so but here the data here is 5.9 million people in the world while they remain displaced internally so this is about this report and now let us try to see yesterday's questions the first one here regarding cic so salary and allowances and even other uh, services of the cic chief information commissioner they were similar to the term for chief election commissioner yes and next one is the salary allowances and other service of this chief vigilance commissioner is similar to the term for chairman of UPSC. yes so both are correct and next question here it is regarding sic so members of this commission were appointed by the governor of state recommended by state government it is not by state government but we have a committee which mainly established and removal of the members it is done not by governor but by the president of india but it is done by government of india so here the both the statements are incorrect that is none of the above is the correct answer and today's question to the first one here it is regarding proceedings of supreme court and second question is regarding all india services so please try to read the statements and give me the correct option in the comment box and now let us try to see a small announcement we in Rathod's IS, we came up with this full foundational course for your UPSC 2023 and 2024. And the validity of this course here is two years. And we are mainly providing more than 600 of 100 hours of classes and the expert faculty who are mainly dealing with this uh, classes. For example, Rajesh sir, Savan sir, Thanya ma'am, Usha ma'am, okay that's me. Next one is Raghav ma'am. So these are some key faculty of this Rathod's IES. And we are focusing on 100% conceptual clarity. Okay. And the cost which is mainly available now with a discount price of 49,000 rupees along with prelims accessories and as well as mains answer writing practice. So if you are going to clear this prelims means we are also going to come up with short term mains test series also. So these all will be included in this, co in this course for two years. So this will be absolutely beneficial and for the students who took this foundational course they will be having separate uh, current affairs based classes on Sunday. Okay, so to buy this course in this website Rathos Ice Academy after clicking the courses or course list so you can see this wide range of courses that are available. So at last this is foundational course if you do payment for here then access will be coming to all these all these modules. And apart from that, we also launched this mains answer writing practice course and this course it is for one year. So this course is also very, very beneficial because we are giving weekly targets. So based on that daily mains answer writing practice will be there. So it covers your GS1, GS2, GS3 and GS4. So in GS, uh, we will be also covering uh, this case studies of GS4 on every Sunday and even essay also. So we will be having wide range of benefits regarding this course. Okay, the course cost here is 7,200 rupees. This is for one year. So, please don't any uh, take any choice. So, please try to join this course. It will be very, very beneficial. And if you want to talk to me, so please call me on this number 8074765513. Okay, now let us try to see today's Hindu newspaper PDF. So, this is our today's Hindu and the date here is June 18th and this is Delhi edition. 
So first topic it is regarding anger ranges against this Agnipath in many states. Okay. So this article which is mainly talking about Agnipath scheme. And here you can see this image. Uh, it is mainly some riots which mainly seen in this Sikindrabad railway station. And about three three railway three trains they are mainly burnt. And apart from that, number of people they had been injured and one person also killed. Okay. And next article it is regarding plea for IP rights. Okay, that is intellectual property rights waiver for this COVID nineteen jobs hits a wall so what happened in this wto they are mainly focusing on this intellectual property rights waiver okay so this is also very important and if you move here you can see china foils bid to designate this lg deputy chief as terrorist i discussed this topic and here you can see off to school through swirling waters so this article which is mainly talking about tribal people especially especially in this cheliar river they are mainly crossing there is no bridge in this uh, on, over this over this river so here these tribal people whenever they want to go to school see yes, these tribal students they need to cross this bridge okay so you have here you have to remember this cheliar river where it is located and which river it is a tributary and if you move forward in this state space there is nothing much important here you can see eight arrested for child trafficking so child trafficking is one of the important serious challenge that we are mainly focusing okay so here you need to focus on this and if you move forward in the state space also i didn't found anything important and here in this editorial page you can see two articles regarding this agnipath and one article it is i mean regarding this cryptocurrencies i discussed this topic and if you see today is saturday so you will be getting this ground zero so there is no need of reading that and here in this 10th paper you can see pakistan may get off fatf gray list and next one is 54 percentage of income of eight parties they went to bjp says adr report you have to focus on what is this adr okay so that is association for democratic reforms and this one is uh, India backs China plan for border activity. So India mainly supported initiative by China to conduct a joint leader operation in 2023. Okay, so because of this, this is in news. And if you move forward in this page number 12, you can see co-vaccin shows a robust safety in 2 to 18 years age group. Okay, so this is about efficacy of this co-vaccin in children. And if you move over here, you can see flood, hazard, slips, kills, 20 in Assam, Meghalaya and death toll reaches 88. So here you need to know why there is a high rainfall in this Meghalaya and as well as Assam. And here, here you have to know about concepts of flood and as well as land slips. So this will be important from your GS paper 1. And next one is Modi to launch a maternal nutritious scheme in Gujarat. So actually on two day visit to Gujarat here, our prime minister he will launch a scheme that is regarding maternal nutrition in the state. They are mainly focusing on maternal nutrition in the state. And the name of this scheme here is Mukhya Mandri Matru Shakti Yojana. It is for lactating and as well as pregnant women. They will be providing 2 kgs of chickpeas, 1 kg of turda and 1 kg of edible oil which is a free of cost. So if you are from... Gujarat, yes, you have to know about this scheme. And if you are focusing on this world page here, you can see one article regarding United Nations. I discussed this topic. And there is also one more article, China gets its third aircraft carrier. And if you see this business page, you can see one article regarding this capital expenditure. Government keep, uh, keen to keep capex growth supportive. Okay, that is about capex means nothing but capital expenditure. So these are the some important articles that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture. So please subscribe to Rathor's IS Academy and don't forget to like, share and comment my videos. And please try to enroll the courses that we are offering in our Rathor's IS like foundational courses and as well as individual courses. So if you have any doubt, please call me on this number 807-476-5513. Okay, so by this I am concluding. Thank you so much.